Well, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, how you doing? Uh, welcome to another JFrog webinar. <clears throat> this one's called Tasty Organic Nougat DevOps. Um, we're going to cover a couple things today. Uh, we're going to go through and we're going to talk about uh, an intro to what we're talking about, which includes me. I'm going to give you a little basis behind the uh, JFrog platform. Uh, you guys are actually going to be privy today to actually one of the first webinars using our new version of the uh, JFrog uh, platform. Uh, and I'll talk about that. We'll talk about Nougat in general. I'm also going to be discussing things like planning, how to plan uh, you know, utilizing Artifactory for various methods. Uh, for you to implement everything from the initial uh, like idea of uh, ingesting binaries, you know, the third-party NuGet packages, uh, to producing packages, uh, better ways to actually uh, produce builds and put them into Artifactory, and even how to use uh, our promotion API to promote atomic units through your system. Uh, I think it'll be a very informative webinar. We're also going to talk a little bit at the end about security and how making sure that uh, everything is safe and secure. In addition to that, we'll also talk about the next steps. Uh, I'm not going to worry about CI today, um, but we'll have a follow-up for webinar probably eventually on this anyway, on how to include this into things like uh, you know, Azure DevOps or uh, you know, Jenkins in general. Uh, but today, I want to focus more on the binary management side of it, not only the binaries that are consumed, but the ones that are produced also. So as stated, uh, my name is Bill um, or William, you know, depending on who you want to call. Uh, please follow uh, JFrog on Twitter. And if you want, you can follow me on Twitter also at uh, William Manning. Uh, so let's continue. Let's just jump right into it. And let's talk about uh, everything doing binaries. So let's start off a little bit about you know, the basic concepts of you know, why JFrog is what it is. You know, and in today's environment in the world, you know, life runs on code. Um, you know, code is the key to everything we do. You know, we say that every company is a software company, and we believe that you know, going through uh, you know everything today, you know, better software management includes things like binaries. That's the reason why uh, JFrog is the company it is. You know, we have all the various aspects of these uh, resources out in the world that people utilize. Everything from your digital lifestyle all the way down to the you know factories, down to smart cities. Uh, everything runs on software. And JFrog is the platform uh, that you can utilize for this. And one of the things that we talk about at JFrog with the platform is, is the idea of being able to have a, a consistency engine. And what, really what the platform does is, in terms of DevOps or DevSecOps or just standard SDLC, software uh, development lifecycle, ah, my mouth's a little off today, um, you know, we have a solution at JFrog for basically every component behind this. And the platform itself really encapsulates everything that we, we talk about. You have Artifactory for all your binary management for things like the third-party transit dependencies you use. We have 27 package types that we support right out of the box, Nougat being one of them. And when we take out a package type to support it in the JFrog platform, we take it, we dissect it, we tear it apart, we look how it operationally runs, we look at its deficiencies, we look at where it sells, and then we actually match that to its repository in Artifactory. And as you can see today, I'll show you with Nougat, you know, it's so that those third-party tools that you're utilizing to it, it looks native. It doesn't look like you're going to Nougat Gallery, but you're actually, it looks like you're going to Nougat Gallery, but you're actually going to Artifactory. And we'll talk about that. We'll also discuss X-Ray, which is in the middle here. And X-Ray is our security compliance and uh, governance tool. This allows you to go in and see if any of those third-party binaries you're utilizing, and I'll show you an example of this today, um, have anything nefarious inside. It can also be used for things like license governance, where maybe you have a, a certain set of criteria internally for liability where you're only allowed to have certain licenses um, available for these third-party libraries that you're doing. Then we have Mission Control and Insight. That's a way, if you're a global organization, it's a central pane of glass that you can go through and maintain and monitor all the things within the ecosystem of the JFrog platform, and then also including things like uh, CI servers like Jenkins. At the bottom, we have Pipelines. Pipelines is our latest tool. It's actually a CI CD tool. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a based on a space YAML, well, YAML based and container based. It's basically like a cloud native style um, CI engine. It could also be used as a CI orchestration tool, but I'm not going to go into that too heavily. And then to the right hand side, we actually have distribution and edge. This is basically a roll your own CDN. 
This is the way for you if you want to distribute your software out, whether it's web services or end user components or software updates, firmware updates or whatnot uh, in IoT land, it gives you the ability to move that information close to the edge and have edge level cache, or we would call immutable release bundles, which are combined types. So like if you're deploying a web service, you could do things like uh, Helm charts and Docker containers as a release, digitally sign them and make sure that they're available where you need them the most. Well, let's go kick into what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about NuGet development. I'm going to give a demonstration today of some things, but before I do that, I want to walk through and talk to you about, you know, what kind of support and what, you know, NuGet really means in terms of the Artifactory, or in this case, JFrog ecosystem. And as I stated, the examples I give today will be available um, when we release this webcast uh, as, a, as a download. Um, but it's, uh, I'm using a very simple project today, nothing too complicated, because I want to spend the majority of the time talking about things like best practices, implementation, um, also to better binary management. So first of all, if you've been working with any sort of NuGet stuff, you know that it, was, it came around in 2011. Uh, it's public available resource is NuGet.org. And one of the things we'll show today is that you can proxy those requests to NuGet.org through Artifactory. And that will allow you to go through and say you have a thousand developers all using the same library pulled from NuGet Gallery. It'll be stored once by the first time the first developer grabs it. And it'll be cached in Artifactory and all subsequent developers will pull from that. Just like we treat it like every other package type that's out there, in addition to all the standard practices you get with NuGet, you also get the ability to go in and add additional metadata. So must, thus making all those uh, NuGet packages uh, basically better for you and more applicable to your organization. We also support version three now out of the out of the box. So all the version three components, uh, it's been out for a couple of years, um, but we, you know, we support version three of NuGet. We also support chocolatey and we also have symbol silver support. Artifactory itself also, like I said, that allows you to go in and, and, and you know, use all the, any various of the NuGet clients, whether you're using Visual Studio, whether you're using the NuGet CLI, and then even JFrog CLI, which I'll show you today, even has NuGet components built into it. So you can do it more natively in terms of working with Artifactory. It gives you a way to do a safe, secure method to do things like NuGet install and all those various aspects. But I'm also going to show you how you can use the CLI tool to capture more information about the build metadata around all your NuGet packages than you've ever thought possible. One of the other things you can also do is we're going to talk about repository design today. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is <clears throat> one of the aspects behind it is, is that I'm going to show you better ways to design your repository so they match your SDLC, number one. Number two, how you can proxy those third-party NuGet gallery you know, uh, packages. In addition to that, I'm also going to show you how you can do cross-team dependencies inside of NuGet projects. Now we have a ton of information available on our wiki site and we'll have that all available to you. We'll also show you how you can actually go in and hook up things like the symbol server and, and things like that. And then on top of that, uh, you know, we also have the SEMR, SEMVER um, versions uh, support also uh, built in. Why would you want to use us as your NuGet gallery, right? And what it comes down to is we have 10 simple reasons. So first of all, um, it reduces network traffic. As I stated, you can proxy your NuGet gallery uh, requests through Artifactory, and then we store those in Artifactory itself. And then, like I said, all subsequent developers pull from Artifactory as opposed to going externalized. This also allows you to put in things like access control and security. So I'll show a little bit inside of X-Ray, our security product, where you can pre-vet out binaries before the developers actually use them. If you're looking at terms in times of like DevSecOps, you know the term is called shift left. It's the cheapest place for ROI for evaluation of binaries before usage so they don't go through your entire SDLC and then find out towards the end that you have something horrible inside. We also have full Docker support, so if you wanted to deploy these things and host them inside of Docker containers, you can actually use the full uh, Docker registry support we have in conjunction with things like the new uh, you know, packages and builds that you produce. Also, too, because everything is stored inside of, of Artifactory, you can also store your proprietary packages and use things like tagging and properties to make them more relevant. You can also use it for things like full reproducible builds. And on top of that, you know, you get the stability that you have uh, behind Artifactory itself, and there's end-to-end -end support for all major binary and package types. 
You know, if you're doing things before, and I just want to give a little quick, you know, view here that we have, you know, your typical NuGet clients are going out to the world, they're going out and they're pulling from NuGet Gallery constantly, where if you have Artifactory next to it, all requests go into Artifactory, where you can apply things, like I said, metadata values and also security around it to make sure that there's nothing nefarious being pulled into your system. In a typical process, if you were working with Artifactory, you would have your standard version control where you do, you know, check in, where you're using GitHub or using, you know, Bitbucket or one of those. Uh, you have your tools that you utilize for those build processes. So there's many out there. The CI tools are, are many. Uh, and this allows you, though, to have a centralized point where not only can you pull all those dependencies that you have when you're working with NuGet, but also all those, you know, the, the, the packages that you produce. And I'm going to show you the various methods today in which you can do it from a standard uh, NuGet push to actually making it into a build. And from that build, collecting all the information around it. And I'm going to show you how you can promote that into something like a production repository so that other people can access this and utilize this the best they can. But before we kick off, I want to kind of talk about some various aspects behind this. And one of the first things I want to talk about is planning. And the reason why I think this is essential is, is that you got to look at Artifactory, actually the JFrog platform in its totality as being something that's more than just a place to store stuff. It's actually a place that you can use to manage your SDLC. I always look at it as a conveyor belt for people who are producing software. So everywhere from the developer all the way down to your deployment. As we say here, developer to deployment, code to cloud, developer to device. Whatever your industry is, you have your nomenclature and technologies and stacks that you use. You have your own wording. But the, when it comes down to the end of the day, it's your SDLC. You have steps in your SDLC. And during those steps, you have various aspects in which you do this. And you can use Artifactory to logically organize your binaries during this process and supply metadata behind it that makes every step of that process more relevant. It lets people like release managers be able to go in and query objects for release. And when they query them, they can pull back all the information about everything that has been through the process, including things like unit testing or QA testing or security evaluations. In a typical software development life cycle, you have you know, the, either the infinite loop, or in my case, I'm just showing you the, the vicious circle, as I call it, of software development. You have your planning, you have your analysts, you go through, you do your design, your implementation, your testing, your maintenance. But the whole time you're doing this, you have various stages. You might call these stages uh, you know, something different in every company, but they're all logically around the same idea. But one of the things that's around this is, is that when in terms of binary management, one of the things that we talk about here is the amount of binaries that you produce. And by logically separating out the various stages into repository types, which I'll get into in a few minutes, it, the thing is, is the number of binaries decreases where you might have thousands of development builds a day and you might only have one production release. And the number of binaries decreases over time as you go through your SDLC, but at the same time, the amount of information and metadata increases. And one of the pure things about Artifactory and actually the JFrog platform is the fact that we use a checksum-based storage. And because we do that, uh, storage is cheaper, and we have this metadata layer on top. And as I stated, and you'll hear me say this a lot, I'm a metadata fanatic, is the fact that metadata is king. And metadata, metadata allows you to have the most relevant information to make the best decisions you can do and to have it all stored in a centralized location, including things like the various steps of your SDLC, really helps push those that idea and those concepts, so this way you can actually become a lean, mean development machine, right? So let's talk about some best practices first. Um, I always try to bring this up as topics because I like to reiterate my, you know, to our customers. Uh, we have over 6,000 customers as a company now. Uh, we have 75, you know, I think about 75% of the Fortune 100, top 10 banks in the world, everything from food technologies, uh, you know, down to uh, space. Uh, you know, we have our customers out there that utilize us for all various aspects and means, including things like IoT, web services, and whatnot. And when I'm, as a developer, I've been developing obviously from my, my gray hair and you know, my white beard, I've been doing this for a long time. And one of the aspects behind it is that I've really come to latch onto is things like three-tier development methods, or in my case, I love 12-factor application method. And part of this is, is that one of the key factors or things that you utilize 
things like Artifactory for besides all the things like automation, uh, you know, being able to do, uh, you know, you know, clean operations and things like that is the fact that limiting the parity between development and production, right? So I'm a big believer in developing in Docker containers. I'm in the, I love the ability of using our promotion API to promote those builds and those containers through the various release steps so that you you remove the ability to have, you know, different parity, uh, you know, builds between, you know, developer and production. The whole, it works on my machine, it removes it. And the idea of being able to actually operate and build faster. So the whole idea of build, release, you know, run, release is really a key factor on where, you know, Artifactory can really help expedite that. And the way you would actually have to think about this is that let's start off with a mentality change in this case, which is repositories. A lot of the customers I deal with, and I try to educate them the most I can, is the fact that repositories are the key to this. And a lot of customers that I come into say, uh, we have one repository for local to store, and I'll talk about the repository types. And then I have uh, remote repositories to proxy, and that's what I do. Well, the thing is, is that repositories can be much more than that. And part of my job is I have another talk that you can go look at our YouTube page. It's actually called the five P's and I go into greater aspects of this, but I want to make sure that you understand, you know, what the repositories mean and how you can utilize those for your SDLC. And I'm going to show you an example, actually, when I produce a, a very simple NuGet package that I built today um, to show you uh, how I utilize that to give a full system of record of everything that I produce. So in, in Artifactory, we have repository types, right? Like I said, we have 27 package types that we support natively, but they're logically separated into things. So we have local repositories. These are the where you store your binaries, your builds, the files that matter to you. These are the things that you own. This is the localized repositories. And this is where I'm going to show you how you can use these local repositories to emulate your SDLC. Then you have remote repositories. Remote repositories are lazy proxies. They're basically lazy cache of third-party repositories. In this case, I'm going to be proxying um, the NuGet gallery through Artifactory. And I'm going to show you why you'd want to do that, number one. Number two, I'll show you all the information behind it. And I'm also going to show you other aspects in which you can actually utilize that information for better uh, management. And then we have virtual repositories. Virtual repositories are a combination of local and remote. And I'm going to show you an example of the one I'm utilizing today. And that gives you the ability to do things where you can have your SDLC encapsulated into a virtual repository, but also allow things like cross-team dependencies. And I'm going to show you how you can actually add in, say, another team's production repository as a repository in, you say, your project repo, so that you're always using the latest version maybe produced for another team. An example of this, you could be creating a web application. And there's a team that produces authentication modules for your web application. In the past, you would have to go through and try to figure out a way to make sure you're always using the latest and greatest version of, the, say, that library so that your application is in the, you know, uh, adherence to the standard that you're doing for your uh, externalized uh, release. Well, in this case, I can include another team's production repository into my build, and based on resolution order, I can always ensure that I have the latest production version of the version that that team produced, so this way I can have actually more simplistic ways to do cross team dependencies um, in terms of my own product lines. So if you look here, I might have you know, dev, QA, you know, testing, staging, release, and I can design my repositories to emulate that actual SDLC. And because everything's linked to metadata, you can actually go through. I'm going to show you an example of the promotion API in a second if you were to do it in terms of, say, a build step of a CI. But also, too, I'm going to show you how you can use the JFrog CLI tool today to actually promote a binary from, say, one repo to another and what benefits you get with that also. So if I were to show you what a promotion API looks like, if you were doing it like, say, a Jenkins build example, you can see where I actually have some metadata here where I'm going through and I'm going to perform a step that says artifactory.promote that allows me to move this binary. Either I can either copy it or I can move it into another repository. And all subsequent metadata around this process and all around this build actually follows me during that process. So I have an entire evaluation stage behind that. So let's get started. So I'm going to go build something, and I'm going to show you how that operates and how it works. And uh, let's continue into the next phase. So first of all, let me show you, um, before I even go into Artifactory, let me show you the actual project that I'm building. So the project that I'm building today is a very simple, very easy 
nothing exciting. Um, just command line that says hello world. There's a hello world app I can say hello from. Nothing exciting about it. It's got a couple of dependencies that I have. Uh, I'll show you some of the dependencies that I pulled in. Uh, but if you look here right now, under my, uh, you know, if you were to look at my NuGet config, you can see where I have no resolution maybe for third party sources that I want to utilize. So before I go into that, I want to show you, you know, the project that I have here. I'm going to go back in. Let's talk a little bit about the JFrog platform, the latest version. I'm going to show you a. Um, I'm going to show you one of my uh, basic um, components I have around this. I'm going to show you the repositories I've created. Then I'm going to show you how to use our set me up instructions to use this. I'm going to go through. I'm going to create the package. I'm going to deploy that into Artifactory. Then I'm going to show you a better method on how you can use the CLI tool to turn that into a build that you can maintain. And then I'm going to show you the promotion API. So let's first jump into, here it is, without further ado, this is the new version of the JFrog platform. This will be out in a couple of weeks, so it's pretty much fresh off the press. And I'm going to log into my instance. You'll notice immediately that there's some big changes that come about uh, with the new version of our platform. First of all, visually from a user interface, it is a very, very different approach. We've actually spent a majority, a big chunk of time over the last year going through and re-architecting our product to go in, and when I go in and, and re-architect the product, we went in, oh, wait, oh my God, hold on a sec. I'm not sharing my screen, so let's do that. Uh, let's start off with the screen sharing thing because I thought I hit the button, but I guess I didn't. So let's see here. Uh, there we go. So let's take a look. So let me go back and show you my project. Here's my project, simple uh, Visual Studio. Uh, I have, you know, I've got it open. My NuGet project is very simple. It's a very simple command line option, uh, you know, that I put together. Nothing exciting. I wanted to keep it less complicated. But as I stated, let me, uh, let me. Uh, this is now not anticlimactic. Now the way I did it. Let me log out. Here's the new UI. <laughs> Here's the new login for the platform. So now let me log in and let me show you what that what we have there. So now we have a unified approach behind all our products. In the past, we used to have all those series of products I showed you earlier to the, in the uh, uh, you know, this uh, demonstration. I talked about was that every interface was its own. We now have a unified approach to our platform itself. So now, Artifactory, our X-ray product distribution pipelines are all now in the same interface. And I'm going to show you some benefits behind this in a few minutes. But I'm not here to talk about it, an introduction to the new platform. I'm going to here to talk to you about how to use NuGet. So first of all, I said I was going to talk about repositories. So let's talk about repositories. We have local, we have remote, and we have virtual. The one we're going to concentrate on today, I'm going to show you, I'm going to filter out, is all my NuGet repos. So if you look here, I've got a NuGet local repo that I produced. This is where I'm actually going to be publishing my builds. This is the, this is the area where I'm going to put my NuGet packages, the proprietary ones that I have. I have a production repository in this case where I'm going to show you the promotion API where I'm actually going to promote my, my actual NuGet package from my local repo to my production repository so another team could use it. Then I have my remote repositories. And if you look here, I've got my NuGet remote repository set up here where I'm connected to NuGet.org and I'm pulling them in. But also I'm going to show you, I'm actually going to go through and process all those NuGet packages I have through X-Ray through a series of rules that I have. Now I have a remote repository and I have a local repository. And the one I'm going to be utilizing today is my virtual repository. And if I click in here, you can see where I've set up a NuGet repository. Uh, and if you look, I've got NuGet local, I've got NuGet production, and I also have a NuGet remote. So I have all three encapsulated under one standard NuGet repository where I'm going to be doing all my work today. If you look at the bottom here, I'm also going to show you that I'm actually deploying by default to my NuGet local repository. Now, I can go in here and do a series of actions like um, I can go in and do include patterns, exclude patterns. I can also do things like force authentication if it's a third party resource that needs an authentication or whatever. But um, for right now, I'm just going to keep things very normalized. And this is the actual one that I'm utilizing. Well, let's go take a look at that repository inside of Artifactory. So let's go to the Artifact browser. If you guys have worked with Artifactory long enough, we've kept the browser the same way, but we've enhanced it. Now let's take a look for my NuGet local. I have it right here, but here's my NuGet virtual repository that I have. And if you look here, if you ever want to see how to implement this, it's very straightforward. Artifactory has this little button that says set me up. 
And when you say set me up, we actually go through and give you all the instructions on how to actually set this up to be utilized in various methods. The method we're gonna to utilize today is to actually set up the NuGet CLI configuration, but you can also do it for the version three for the API of NuGet CLI, and you can even go in and set up for Visual Studio. And once you've done this and you set this up, all the standard things like NuGet push and NuGet install all operate normally, and you can define Artifactory as your standard source. Now, for my instance, if you look here, you can make it very, you know, very normalized by saying username and password. But in my case, I'm actually going to log in, and it's going to allow me to go in and actually fill in the values that I have for my, my username and my obfuscated password. In this case, this is my encrypted password. So let's copy that, and let's go over to my, 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 uh, my sources. So here's that project in my command line. And before, when I showed you, if you look, there's no reference here to Artifactory. There's no information in here that says I'm going to use Artifactory to proxy my binaries um, to make sure that any of those third-party sources I have are in here. So if I go back, I can paste in that NuGet command that I have that was supplied by Artifactory. And if I click that, it'll go in and successfully add it. And now if we go into here, you'll be able to see that we actually have that information stored as part of this project. Now, let's go back in and let's copy in my, my set API key. And when I set my API key, I can go in and place it in this way too. And now it's been saved as part of my image source here. So now I have um, my, my project all set up. And now that I have it set up to start using Artifactory, I can even go in and you know let's go take a look at the NuGet gallery if I wanted to. And I can go find, say, something like Dapper, right? So I've got a, a, you know, maybe a NuGet source I have here. And let's go in and let's do NuGet install. And I'm going to say Dapper. And I'm going to say source artifactory. And I do this. It's going to go out, get that package. It's going to proxy it through artifactory. It's going to come. And now it's going to put it into uh, artifactory itself. And if I do an LS here, you can see that actually Dapper is now installed into my project if I wanted to. And if we go back in to our factory itself, and I were to do a refresh to show you inside of here, I can expand it out, and there's Dapper right here. Here's that package that I went through, and I installed it, and now it's actually being referenced inside. So now I've actually proxied this NuGet package through our factory, and I have a copy. This includes all the information that I have here around um, you know, everything like its dependencies. So if you look here, this actually has two solid dependencies. Here's all the package information. I can go in and change the ACLs if I wanted to, to say who has access to this. I can also add additional metadata properties, but I've collected a ton of information from the NuGet gallery, so I have a system of record that is available for everything that I'm doing around here. So this is great. Now I actually have a way for me to go in. And now say I wanted to go in and see um, you know, what this also has. Well, one of the things that we've done is, is that with the new version of our platform, we have our package viewer. And our package viewer is a way for you to go see what packages are done. So it's like a catalog. So if I say Dapper, I can go in here. Oh, did I spell it right? Oh, maybe it's not available in here just yet. It's not available in here just yet. So it takes a minute sometimes for it to do it. But let's go in and without further ado, since we are pressed for time, I'm going to show you now, I'm going to go produce a NuGet build itself, okay? So let me go grab my, um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab some, I have a little helpful thing that I've done here. So if you take a look here, I'm going to go in, I'm going to actually, I'm actually going to build my package right here. So this is my NuGet pack. So I'm going to pack up this. I'm, I have a, by the way, you're going to see a bunch of little errors that come, that come here. Give it a minute. And once this is done building, this is the exciting part. Yes, I have errors. I get it. But now I'm actually going to take this package and I'm actually going to publish this into Artifactory. All right. So let's go in. Let's go push it up into Artifactory. And now I have my own private build that I'm utilizing. So I'm going to take this and I've uploaded it into Artifactory itself. And if I do a refresh on this, you should see there's my Hello Frog. So here's my own NuGet package, my own proprietary NuGet package that I have, and here's my information about it, and I can do all the same things I can handle a normal package type. That's my NuGet virtual. Now let's take a look here, though, right? So if I go in and I look at my NuGet local, you can see my NuGet local, here's that package itself. Now, 
I can only go through an x-ray scan it, but there shouldn't be any one. There's a violation actually I have here because I have a license value set up that says I don't accept uh, the Apache license in this case. So this is letting me know that there's a violation. So I've actually scanned my own package and found a fault of my own. But this is all great, right? But this is all standard NuGet package that I want to save and I want to utilize, right? But what if I wanted more information around it, right? What if I wanted to do something different? So let's take a look. Let's clear the view here so you can get a better perspective. Here's that hello world package that I created, right? So say I wanted to do something different. Now I want to know everything about how this package is actually constructed. I want to store a system of records so that I know how things are being utilized. Let's, let me go back here for a minute. And let's do this. I'm actually going to take and I'm going to upload this package into Artifactory slightly different. And in this case, I'm actually going to go through and I'm going to assign, um, I'm going to upload this package. So here's that NuGet package up to my NuGet local, which I already have it there. It'll allow me to overwrite because I control it. And I'm going to call it, I'm going to give it a build name. I'm going to say NuGet hello frog. And I'm going to call it build number one, right? So I'm going to turn this into a build now. Now, I can do this inside of Visual Studio, but I can also do it from the command line. So let's do this. I'm going to use the JFrog CLI tool in this case. I've already configured it to talk to my instance. And if I hit Enter, it's going to go through and it just uploaded it back into Artifactory. So I can manually upload this. But let's do one more thing. Let's go collect all the information around it. So let me explain to you what this does. So the JFrog CLI has a lot of power behind it, right? So there's a lot of commands that you can run. You can do things like, and I'm going to show you, we're going to go through and we're going to collect all the GitHub information about this project because I haven't checked into the GitHub. Then I'm going to collect all the build information, so all the environmental variables around it. Then I'm also going to go through and I can, I'm going to pull in any of its dependency information and I can go through and I'm going to publish it. And then after I publish it, I'm going to promote it. So let me show you what that looks like, right? So I just uploaded it into Artifactory. If you look here, it says Artifactory. That BAG, hello frog, right? And you get hello frog. That's my build that I did and build number one. Let's hit that. Okay, I've now collected all the information uh, that's around that. Now I'm going to do BCE. Now BCE is build collect environmental information. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a build object around this build. And now let's do that. I've now collected all the build information. Now we can also go in. And I'm going to say, um, let's go ahead and another step in here, and I'm going to say BAD. I want to collect all the information around all its dependencies. So let's do BAD. I don't think I have any dependencies. Oh, BAG. Oh, whoops, I hit, I, I missed a type there. Let's go back. BAD. Okay. Now, last but not least, I want to publish this build into Artifactory. So I'm going to do BP. So let's do that. I've now gone in and I've successfully took all that information that I collected. And say I wanted to even if I wanted to go in here and take a look and see, you know, what, you know, it, you know, maybe what sort of, you know, what sort of dependencies I have. We also have built-in NuGet commands. So if you look here, I have one that says NDT that says show solution dependency tree, right? So maybe I go in and I say JFrog and I say RT and I say NDT. There we go. I can actually see from this command line the dependencies I have. Now let's go into Artifactory though. Here's my build browser. Well, look at, here's that actual build I produced, right? I did this from the command line. I have one version that I put in. And if I click in this version, you can see where I actually have my hello frog, um, you know, build. If I click in here, you can see here's the NuGet. I'll go show you in a minute. I can go click on this and I can go bring this over and find it in the repository tree. But I also have all the environmental data around it. Here's all the environmental information about how it was actually constructed. With X-Ray, I can actually, I'm not scanning it currently right now. I don't have this as a resource, but I can also do things like hook it up to JIRA and have all the JIRA ticket information here. If I had more than one build, I can actually do a comparative analysis between the build. And, and when I start using the promotion API, I can go in and actually have a system of record here on you know, each day that it's been in. Well, now I've taken that basic package that I have here. If I click in, and now I've turned it from just a standard package that I have stored here I actually now have a system of build record for each one of these. So I can go in now and I can say, oh, look, you know what? I have all this information now, how it was constructed, what its contents is. I don't have I'm happy with this actual build itself. Let's go and promote it and let's see what information we can find out about it, right? So let's go back to our tree for a minute. And I'm going to show you that we have NuGet local and I have NuGet prod. And if you look under NuGet prod, there's nothing there right now. 
So let's go in and let's let's go let's go take this and I'm going to take this line like this command I have right here. I'm going to copy this and bring it over to my shell. Now let me clear this again for you. Let's paste it in and let's go through the parameters. If you look here, it says JFrog RT BPR. That's build. That actually, in this case, is build promotion. I set a status of a release. This could be any stage that I want. These are all, there's a whole series of metadata that you can have around it, and I'll show you the parameters behind that in a minute. But you can also see where I can add comments. Here's my build, here's the build number, and here's its destination. Now, if I hit that, that's gonna go through, and now it's actually promoted that build from my local to my production. And if we go back in here and I hit refresh on, on this local instance, you'll notice that Hello Frog is gone, Let's go to production for a second, and here it is in my production repository. So I can also have a copy of it, but in this case, I'm actually moving this build. And if I go back to my build browser, I can show you that this build in here now actually has a release history to say that this product was actually released. So now I actually have it. I have a, another effort that I can do in here. I can even go in if I wanted to, and I can say, you know what? I want to change the uh, status of this to say, you know, instead of maybe release, um, maybe I want to do, say, hold, right? And if we do that, I can go in, and if I go out and back in again, just because uh, there's no real refresh in this case, um, I can go in, and this should be actually, I have another one done, and I can go into my release, and you can see each stage that I've been in through this entire example. So this way, I can have that system of record for everything that I'm doing. And I can have the multiple versions if I wanted to, to go in and do this again. So if I wanted to, I can actually, one of the nice things is I can actually, if I wanted, to, I can create another build. So let's do that, actually. Let's go back and I'm going to create a new build around this. So I have my new package. I'm going to change this to, to number two. All right. So I created build number two. In my case, I'm going to go collect all that information. Um, I'm going to get the GitHub information. I just want to show you what it's like to do a diff, right? So let's go collect all the uh, environmental and system information for two. Let's get its dependencies. Okay. And then, oh, I did the wrong button. That's okay. And now let's publish it. Build two. And if we go back in and I, and I go to look at my build browser, let's go back in and let's go back to uh, Nougat Hello Frog. You can see I have now build number two. It has no release history around this, but I can also go in if I wanted to and actually uh, you know, see the, what, what the current status of a release is. If I click at it, and there shouldn't be any changes, but if you look here, I can show you that I can do a diff between two NuGet packages, say if something went wrong. So if you go in and you take a look, like I said, you can also do this in terms of, of uh, you know, doing uh, code content. I can also show you that I went in and I also have policies uh, that I've built to actually evaluate all the binaries that I have. And if I did this, one of the things I'm doing too is, is I'm actually publishing all that information about any info that has a problem into my Slack. So I'm actually using Artifactory to promote information in there so I can see if there's anything nefarious. In addition to that, by the way, I want to show you is, is that under Artifactory, one of the nice things we have in here too is that we were talking about the new gallery before. And if I wanted to show my proprietary package, I could say hello, and there's my hello frog nougat package. You can see it was scanned by X-ray. And if I click in here, you can see I actually have, in this case, I have one version available um, because I haven't promoted it into the actual usage yet. I can click in here, show you all the information. I'm like, here's the other individual builds I have before. So that's actually part of. You can see all the X-ray data uh, behind this itself. So you can see all the information I have around that. You can see if it's been distributed out. So if I use this somewhere, I can do that. And of course, I have the repositories in which this is being referenced right now. So here's my local repo, and here's my production repo. I know this has been a high level view of everything, but I want to talk about, um, you know, I just want to show that you can go and have a standard, you know, M, you know, NuGet package you publish into Artifactory. You can convert that into a build so you actually have more information about it. You can also go through and publish that and have it as a, set, a series of steps. So if you look here, you can see I have various statuses, and the status actually reflects uh, where it is in the SDLC.
And now I'm gonna go back to my presentation to show you some information around security and why that's important. And then we're gonna wrap up our little talk here. So you can use us for everything from those third-party transitives. You can create your own packages. You can actually set it up using repositories and share them in various methods. You can collect more information about every build that you have. You can emulate your SDLC and have that as part of your process and have a system of record and have as much metadata as relevant to you. And then the last thing I want to talk about, of course, is I'm going to stop sharing for right now. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to show my presentation. Uh, how do I do that? I get, am I presenting right now? I can't tell. There we go. I should be presenting, I believe. All right. Um, and I'm going to start talking about security. Um, I want I want to bring this up. Uh, I got to see if I can. I'm not sure if you guys can see my. Um, yeah, I don't know. Can you see my? Like okay, so maybe I need to go. Oh, there we go. All right. I just want to make sure you guys can see what I can see what I'm showing. Um, so one of the things I want to talk about is is that with Artifactory and X-ray. Being able to make sure that your third-party binaries that you're utilizing are safe and secure um, is, is a pretty much an is essential feature. And what Artifactory does with X-Ray is, is it goes through, it tears apart TarGZs, NuGet packages, Docker containers, and whatnot, and shows you the contents of those. So you can find out if you have anything nefarious inside of the things that you're utilizing. Also, too, you can do things like Docker containers. So you can actually go as full in-depth as possible, even down to dependency resolution, and show you the information embedded inside of those, of those you know, things that you're utilizing to make sure that everything is safe and secure and there's nothing nefarious internal. With X-Ray, we use this data to actually figure out you know, so that you provide protection for your company and make sure that you actually have that, that information available to not only your developers, but your end users also to make sure that, you know, everything complies to your organization standard. And lastly, one of the things I want to show is, is that by making it part of your security offering uh, and the way that you actually construct and build your code really allows you to have insight into it from, you know, developer, you can make it part of your build evaluation process and also part of your release process. And if you utilize one of our ID plugins, what's nice about the ID plugin is, is that your developers can actually get the security data directly inside of the IDE so that they can enact on anything potentially wrong uh, with the product, you know, or the libraries that you're using before it even gets into your CI process, thus saving you actually a ton of money and looking like a rock star. Um, this is basically the end of my talk. I just wanted to kind of bring it up. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to talk about also too is uh, we have a big thing coming up in San Jose coming up in the near future. We have our Swamp Up, our annual user conference. This year is uh, June 22nd to the 24th. Um, lots of great people are attending. We have a lot of good hands-on classes. And then we also have a lot of good sponsors that show off their wares also. And uh, just go to swampup.jfrog.com and sign up. And um, that's my talk today. I hope this has been informative on why you'd want to do this, but why you also want to use Artifactory to store your package you produce and the builds you produce to make sure that you have everything internally and ready to go. Um, I hope everybody has a wonderful day. I see if there's any questions that people might have, and I'll try to answer them. And if not, um, I see a little QA, uh, a little message here, I think. I can't tell. Um, you're good. Well, well, Thank you. Uh, and, uh, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, if there's no other questions, there's tons of information on our JIRA page. Uh, please go check it out. Um, also, too, like I said, uh, some nice things around here. Let me share my screen for a second. Um, you know, please, when you get an opportunity, uh, you know, you can go to our, uh, you know, we also, if you want to learn all other information, we also have our JFrog Academy, um, which is just, uh, which is available publicly. Uh, JFrog Academy is a great way to learn more. I can go, you can get into greater detail of some of the topics that we had today. So everything from what Artifactory is, down to administrators, DevOps, engineers, and developers, even down to security. Um, also, I have a talk on DevOps.com if you're in a highly regulated environment on how to implement security around that. And also to go check out some of the other amazing videos that we have 
on our YouTube page for lots of information and content. And also keep an eye out. We're, we're out there a lot on the road. Uh, so please go and check us out at some of the conferences uh, that we have coming up, such as DevNexus that we have uh, coming up in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and then also, too, uh, we have some other ones coming up and they're on our page. Um, I can't remember them off the top of my head because I'm awful. Um, and uh, that's uh, that's my talk today. And uh, you know, thank you people for attending. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed. And uh, that's uh, that's me. Cheers, everybody. Keep software liquid. <laughs>